Well, welcome to or welcome back to the 510 Report, where we talk about industry news, advocacy, and general goings on. The first thing I wanted to talk about this week comes out of California. Stefan and Not Blowing Smoke posted on their Instagram recently about some upcoming flavor ban meetings and hearings that are in need of attendees. These are happening up in Northern California. The first one is the Marin County flavor ban. Urgent call to action and important merit hearing is scheduled for November 6, 1030 a.m. This is at 3501 Civic Center Drive, room 330, San Rafael, California, 94901. The San Pablo Flavor Band City Council meeting happening November 5th at 6 p.m. This is at 13831 San Pablo Avenue, San Pablo, California. And lastly, an ordinance introduction in Alameda City regarding the Flavor Band November 7th at 7 p.m. This is at the City Council Chambers, 2263 Santa Clara Avenue, Alameda, California. I'm going to have all of the information to all of these meetings happening in Northern California down in the description below. But if you are a vapor in Northern California and you want to speak directly to the city council members and the politicians that are supporting and introducing and voting on these flavor bans, then this is absolutely your perfect time to do that. One thing that I frequently like to remind people about is that these city employees, these city council members, and these politicians, they work for us. They work for the public. And it's times like this when we have the opportunity to actually speak to them face to face. I feel like we should really take advantage of that, especially when they are introducing, discussing, and voting on anti-vape legislation that's going to heavily affect your life. I would encourage as many vapors as I can to go and attend these flavor ban committee and hearing meetings. And so the next thing I wanted to talk about is a little bit Instagram related and a little bit sharing of information related. I had reposted this graphic on my Instagram and there were multiple, multiple, multiple reposts of this graphic on Instagram before I reposted it and many, many after I reposted it as well. It found its way to Twitter and kept spreading around and getting reposted, reposted, reposted. And it's still up on my Instagram because it's still relevant. The problem is this isn't any new information like I kind of thought it was at first glance. Maybe this is just me being confused about what I was reading, but the graphic says, today the Royal College of Physicians is releasing a new 200 page report titled Nicotine Without Smoke, Tobacco Harm Reduction, which concludes among other things, smokers can be reassured and encouraged to use e-cigs, and the public can be reassured that e-cigs are much safer than smoking. E-cigs are not a gateway to smoking. E-cigs do not result in the normalization of smoking. And when I first glanced at this graphic, I got the impression that this was going to be new information for some reason, which is actually not the case, but that doesn't really matter. What this particular graphic is referring to is the Royal College of Physicians report on tobacco harm reduction, the same report that was released in 2016, the same report that we have been sharing with everybody possible in the world. It's the same Royal College of Physicians report that Greg Connolly from the AVA gave directly to then Surgeon General Vivek Murthy. So while this necessarily isn't any new information, it's still very, very relevant information. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a link in the description of this video to the full Royal College of Physicians report on nicotine without smoke, tobacco harm reduction. If anybody is interested in having a link to the actual report to share around. But honestly, thank you to everyone that reposted that and everyone that's been reposting it. This report from the Royal College of Physicians is one of the biggest tools that we have in our arsenal. I think it's just very important to keep on hand, so to speak. And if you haven't read the full Royal College of Physicians report on tobacco harm reduction, I highly recommend reading the whole thing and absorbing as much of the information as you can. It comes in genuinely really helpful when you're talking to to people about vaping. One more quick thing I wanted to mention, I would love for everybody to go watch the new Regulator Watch video. Brent Stafford and his crew over at Regulator Watch uploaded an amazing interview with David Abrams recently. David Abrams is a world leading tobacco control scientist at NYU. They talk about multiple subjects in this video, including the teen vaping epidemic and how a lot of the claims that the anti-vaping groups are really overblown. It's a fantastic video and I will have a link to it down in the description. So moving on from that, I kind of wanted to revisit 
a story that we talked about a few weeks ago regarding Amendment 9 in Florida. So for anybody not up to speed, Amendment 9 in Florida is an amendment that's being proposed that's going to ban offshore oil drilling in Florida as well as ban vaping in indoor workplaces. We talked about this a few weeks ago. I'll link to that 510 report in the description, but overall, it's a very, very weird bill. And apparently, I'm not the only one that thought it was weird because it's drawing a lot of criticism now. And really, this Amendment 9 in Florida is literally just the tip of the iceberg of how sort of backward and smarmy and behind closed doors, some of these things get passed. This article from the local news four station in Tallahassee, Florida said, rather than allowing the vape ban to stand on its own as a proposed constitutional amendment, the commission coupled it with a proposed ban on offshore oil drilling in Florida waters, describing the combination as an environmental amendment. Evidently, a lot of the citizens of Tallahassee, Florida are seeing the way that this is playing out and are not happy about it. And I honestly don't blame Blame them. Lumping in offshore oil drilling with a vaping ban and hiding it under the guise of, oh, this is an environmental protection law. And Lisa Carlton, who is a Constitution Revision Committee member and one of the key supporters of Amendment 9, she had to say, for this election, look at all the amendments on the ballot. Study them and decide based on substance whether they fit into what you think Florida should look like for the next generation. She's essentially pleading with people saying, no, no, please don't vote against this bill just because you don't like the process of this bill. There have been lots of people that have tried to get Amendment 9 removed from the ballot in Florida, including former Supreme Court Justice as Harry Lee Anstead. He actually filed a lawsuit against the state for using this practice called log rolling. I was unaware that log rolling was a thing, but apparently this is a fairly normal practice in the political world. Log rolling is where you take a bill that is not expected to pass, but the politicians really want it to pass, and they kind of couple it with a bill that they know will pass. Apparently the indoor vaping ban they didn't think had enough to stand on its own legs, and so that's why they kind of coupled it with this off offshore oil drilling ban, log rolling, yay politics. But David Micah, who is the executive director of the Florida Petroleum Council, his group actually opposes Amendment 9, saying that the laws on the books are more than sufficient for offshore oil drilling in Florida. And this is coming from the head of the Florida Petroleum Council. He had to say, this issue is the poster child of what is wrong with the bundling that was done. The court said it was legal, but that doesn't make it right. I'm very relieved to know that it's not just me that thinks that this is absolutely crazy. I'm glad that there are higher ups and people in power in Florida that also see the ridiculousness of this log rolling bill. If you are a vapor in Florida, definitely vote no on Amendment 9. So moving on from that, I think it's time to talk about good guy Altria. So Altria is the parent company of a few tobacco companies, Philip Morris International, as well as Newmark. Newmark was the subsidiary of Altria that was creating their vapor product. Products, so things like the Mark 10. Well, Altria, the maker of 800 billion manufactured cigarettes every single year, suddenly cares about the children. They announced recently that they are going to pull all of their very, very poorly selling vapor products off of the market. They're so concerned with the youth vaping epidemic that they just don't want to sell their flavored vapor products anymore. I'm assuming they're still going to continue to make and manufacture cigarettes to the tune of 800 billion manufactured cigarettes per year. But because Altria cares so much about the youth vaping epidemic, they're pulling all of their Mark 10 vapor products off of store shelves, as well as all of their green smoke products off of store shelves. If you've never heard of green smoke, that's okay. It's not very good and it didn't sell well. Interestingly enough, Altria recently met with FDA Commissioner Scott Godlib talking about what next steps they could take to address this vaping youth epidemic. Consistent with our discussion with the FDA and because we believe in long-term promise of e-vapor products and harm reduction, we're taking immediate action to address this complex situation. While we don't believe we have a current issue with use access or use of our e-vapor products, we are taking this action because we don't want to risk contributing to the issue. So they don't want to risk contributing to this vaping youth epidemic issue. I just want to make sure that Altria knows that the 800 billion tobacco cigarettes that they produce this year still do contribute greatly to cancer. That's not even an arguable point. Altria is so concerned with the youth vaping epidemic that they pulled their poorly selling vapor products off of the shelves, but still continue to sell 
just cancer-causing, carcinogen, chemical-ridden cigarettes. And this is somehow being painted as a positive Thing. Altria really cares about the youth vaping epidemic. Apparently Altria really doesn't care about cancer or COPD or any of the other illnesses that their cancer-causing cigarettes cause 480,000 people a year to die from. And the last statement from Altria, it's one of those head scratchers, man. We support adult tobacco consumer choice and the promise of tobacco harm reduction, and we fully intend to offer a compelling portfolio of e-vapor products for adult smokers and vapors through the FDA's product pathways or when underage use of e-vapor is addressed. So good guy Altria, still selling cigarettes, still selling cancer, still selling emphysema and COPD. They believe in tobacco harm reduction so much that they're pulling all of their products off of the shelves until the underage issue is addressed. The fact of the matter is Altria's e-vapor line of products, as they call it, is a complete failure. Nobody is buying them. Altria's bread and butter comes from tobacco cigarettes, which is why, again, they produced 800 billion of them this year and are ironically enough Enough pulling their much safer alternatives off of the shelves. I try to keep obscenities out of the 510 report. I try to keep this a little bit more professional, but I want to say Altria can go f themselves with a gluten-free dildo. And the last thing I wanted to mention before we wrap up today's 510 report is some news out of South Australia. South Australia has just passed some of the most rigorous and restrictive vaping legislation in the entire country. Both houses in the South Australian parliament recently voted to amend the Tobacco Products Regulation Act, which essentially bans all sales of vapor products. Online sales are banned. Email sales are banned. They mention fax sales are banned. I've never ordered vape gear through a fax before, but yes, that is banned in South Australia. And interestingly enough, until this week, South Australia was the only state in the country that hadn't passed any vape laws. But man, did they come out swinging and all of these laws will be finalized next month. And of course, the main reasoning behind all of these laws in South Australia now are to protect the children. Gotta protect those kids from those dangerous online sales. And obviously this is getting a lot of criticisms from tobacco harm reduction advocates in South Australia. And Colin Mendelson, who is an associate professor at the University of New South Wales, seems to think that this legislation was designed specifically to benefit big tobacco. This law is unenforceable. The South Australian government plans to prosecute vendors selling products online to South Australians. Good luck with that. So that's what's going on in South Australia. I don't know of any advocacy groups in South Australia. If you are a vapor in South Australia, I would absolutely love to hear from you in the comments. How much do you buy online and will you continue to buy online even though it's now technically illegal in South Australia. And I think that's where we're going to end this 510 report, but we're not gonna end this 510 report without mentioning kasa.org. If you wanna be kept aware of possible vape legislation coming up in your particular city, state, or area, just join Casa. It's free, it's easy, all you need is an email, and they will email you calls to actions. So go sign up at kasa.org. And remember, as Kevin Skipper always said, you don't have to do everything, but you do have to do something Let's get involved.